Now we all know how nostalgic the Power Rangers franchise is to a lot of people, myself included. Thousands of kids watched it in the 1990s, the 2000s, the 2010s, and possibly the 2020s continuing forward. Dino Thunder and Jungle Fury had always been my favourites. Hell, Dino Thunder is even ranked on two articles as the best Power Rangers ever, and I sure as hell agree with them. Although not all Power Rangers were great, as there would be a few crap ones which brings us to today's review. Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. This is considered to be the worst Power Rangers series ever by a lot of people, and I couldn't agree more. I can say ever though because I haven't seen all of them, and I have heard Megaforce is really bad, but I have seen the Legendary Battle Extended Edition on Netflix, and oh god, that was awful. But it's safe to say Operation Overdrive is the worst Power Rangers of the 2000s. Even in childhood, something felt off about Operation Overdrive. I do have nostalgia for it as I did get the toys and I even dressed up as Red Overdrive Ranger for Halloween back in 2008 when I was 4 years old. But the show, I don't know. I didn't really get into it as much as I did for all the others in the franchise. I do remember liking Once a Ranger, but that was only because of Kira, and I love Kira, so that was the only reason, but the rest of the series just didn't do it for me. So on rewatch, is the series as bad as I remember? Oh boy. The story is, it centers around the Corona Aurora, where two brothers discover it, and it separates them. Mr. Hartford must assemble his own team of Power Rangers to find the Aurora Jewels. The story is, oh boy, very, very bland. It's just dull and not very interesting. I even think it disrespects Power Rangers and superheroes in general, especially in Once a Ranger when the team quit after they lose their powers, but it's also very mean-spirited. There's an episode where the Rangers are in their Zords un underwater, and Ronnie is trying to look and then Will is blocking her view and they start arguing. It's scenes like that which make the team seem like unlikable dicks and horrible Power Rangers. The story is also very forgettable. I'm struggling to remember it even for review purposes, hence why I may have summarised the storyline wrong, but it's just bland and pretty boring. I don't even think kids will like it. You'll have much more fun playing the Operation Overdrive toys than watching this show. The story is just dull. It's just awful and it disrespects Power Rangers because watching it, I just got the feeling the writers who wrote it didn't give a crap what they were writing, which is a shame because Dino Thunder, Jungle Fury, SPD, Time Force, and while Mighty Morphin might be corny now, at least the writers did care about what they were writing. With Operation Overdrive, I just don't think they gave a crap because it's just incredibly mean-spirited. The effects in CGI, once again, they just didn't care. This is 2007, and they're even worse than all the other franchises' effects and CGI in the Disney era. I thought the dinosaur in the first episode of Dino Thunder was hilarious to look at, but with the Operation Overdrive, the CGI is just horrible and the effects just aren't nice. I know with other series like Jungle Fury they have their dated CGI and effects, but at least with the others they did put effort in some effects, but here, it's just crap. And this is 2007, the year before Jungle Fury, so Jungle Fury was a big step up with CGI and effects. The acting is alright for what it is, there's been a lot worse, but the acting is good enough for what it is, even though Flurious performance is very over the top at times. Oh, and where have you been, my walking welcome man? What? What? I thought because it was my day off that I would go for a little walk in the woods. Well, I hope you had a good time. Yeah. Because it's the last day off you'll ever have! I'm trying to conquer the world, and you're off pantsing through the forest? Do you think the Power Rangers are walking through the woods? Well... But the acting, for the most part, is okay. The characters, though... Ugh. Mac, the main character, the Red Ranger, is pretty crap. He's just not interesting and very idiotic. They do a plot twist with him which tries to be emotional. While the episode things not said where they reveal it isn't that bad, and I don't know. I would have been sad if the character was actually interesting and was developed, which he isn't. And there's a lot of cliches in that episode with the moping and doping, etc. Which could have been executed well, but it just wasn't. And I didn't like Mac at all, and the twist was just very weak. Dax, the Blue Ranger, who is the comic relief, is very annoying. I can't remember laughing at any of his jokes, and he was just very annoying. Will, the Black Ranger, is dumb. I didn't care about him at all, and the episode where he's pretending to work for the villains and betray the rangers was confusing and ridiculous. Rose, the Pink Ranger, I think is a bitch, and I hated the moment when she talks shit about Tizon behind his back when he's right behind her. I mean, and she's complaining because he's different. 
You bitch! The whole point of different people is to be unique. I mean, holy crap that is mean-spirited, especially for Power Ranger standards. Tizon, the Mercury Ranger, whose suit is very poor, the colors do go well, but it's not very nice. They give him a character arc of looking for his girlfriend, which is wrapped up nicely, I guess, but I didn't care because it was just nothing done with it. He's an uninteresting character and I couldn't give a crap about him. Ronnie, the Yellow Ranger, is probably the less unlikable of the team. She's not terrible, but she's okay. So yeah, pretty much the Overdrive team is pretty shit, as these characters are crap and very uninteresting. The villains though, oh my god. There's Flurius who has a very over the top performance in the clip I showed earlier, who's very weak and pretty shit. I just didn't care about him, and his goal was pretty silly. Moltar, his brother, is pretty shit too. Once again, I just didn't care. I will admit the lava lizards have a cool design and I'd love to see a similar design in a Kung Fu Panda movie, but again, he's just bland. But his design, it's actually not that bad. The Fear Cats are okay, they're probably the best villains of the series, and their design is cool, but I just didn't care and they were just there. Camdor, who has a pretty epic design, that's for sure, but I can't even remember his character, he was very forgettable. Miratrix is the same as the others, bland and uninteresting and I just didn't care. The Overdrive villains are really bad, bland and just forgettable and I'm struggling to remember them. Although there is a comic relief to Flurius, who may be dumb, yes, but I do actually find him funny. Norg is probably the best character in Operation Overdrive. He did make me laugh a lot, and he was entertaining to watch. Oh, oh, oh. You have me and, and Clarence! <laughs> Germaniums. No. <laughs> they were good. Not a problem. Mr. Hartford is all right. He's not awful, but he's all right at best. Though, was it really necessary to have him stop Mac from joining the Rangers in the beginning of the show? As for Spencer, though, I like him. He's entertaining and he's quite funny too. Operation Overdrive is hands down the worst Disney era Power Rangers ever. It has a bland, forgettable, and mean spirited story, terrible effects, bad characters, and oh yeah, the theme song. Oh lord. I guess some lyrics are catchy, like five Rangers looking for the same five stones. The Operation Overdrive theme song is very poor. And compare that to what came after it. Yeah, what a step up. Yeah, I strongly dislike this series, and it's definitely my least favourite thing to come out of the Power Rangers franchise, even though Legendary Battle is awful, but my god! However, as for my thoughts on the 15th anniversary special team up once a ranger, I have mixed feelings on it. The Overdrive team are definitely at their worst, and Max saying what's the point of being a Power Ranger if you don't have any power, I think is a disgrace because the whole point of a superhero is doing what's right, and that just feels disrespectful to it. Yeah, but what good's being a Power Ranger if you don't have any power? And Thrax, the son of Rita Repulsa and Lord Zed, is a terrible villain. But there are some cool things in it, like the veteran ranger's entrance is awesome, the fight at the end of part 1, well, not all that great, but the un unmorphed fight at the beginning of part 2 is pretty damn awesome. Even the climax ain't that bad either. It's not amazing, but it's pretty decent for what it is. When they morph though is awesome and having the old theme songs being played is epic, except for the replacement of the original Mighty Morphin theme, which is because of Raw Rights issue. But that's honestly ridiculous because they had it in Legacy of Power of Dino Thunder, but then again, the veteran ranger suits are a lot better than the Operation Overdrive suits. I really don't like the Overdrive suits. The helmet designs are muck, and while the white does go well with the colour, I just don't like the design of the suit. Granted, there's worse. Although their Zords in Command Center are cool, and I do like the Megazord design. Overall, I'd say Once a Ranger is mediocre, average at best. It may have a lot of crap, but it's good, good to be found. And Kira and Tori were hot, and it is nice to see Adam, Tori, Kira, Bridge, and Xander again. Although I have to question, why did they bring Adam back? I mean, if they were doing the right order of Power Rangers, wouldn't they have had to get a Wild Force Ranger back? I mean, it's great to have Adam back, don't get me wrong. But shouldn't they have got a Wild Force Ranger in it as that was the Power Rangers before Ninja Storm? Just a question I ask myself. 
not a problem. It's just, it's just like a little nitpick. I've seen some people say that if they got a sixth ranger to team up with Tizon in the episode, they should have got Merrick back. But I think they should have got Trent back. I just think it would be nice to have Trent in there along with Kira. And considering they did actually get two Mystic Force Rangers in the Sentai for it, they got Sentinel Knight and Yellow Mystic Ranger. But I don't know, I just think it would be cool if Trent was there. However, Merrick wouldn't have been a bad choice. It's kind of funny how Kira's in the 15th anniversary and yet Trent's in the 25th anniversary. Which that 25th anniversary special is actually very awesome. I watched it last night and I still think it's pretty damn epic. It was a cool concept, I'll give it that. But the execution was just very poor and very weak. It may be the best o Overdrive episode, but I think that could go to things not said for at least trying to be emotional. But the veteran morph was awesome, and Kira did look hot doing it. It's morphin' time! Although, to be honest, I wish Jungle Fury was the 15th season of Power Rangers so we could have that once a ranger in that series and not crappy Overdrive, because unlike the Overdrive team, the Jungle Fury team was very likable. So yeah, Operation Overdrive is the worst Power Rangers series out there, and even worse than the 2017 movie. It's trash. <laughs> it's, it's god-awful. And that's why I'm going to give Power Rangers Operation Overdrive a 3 out of 10. Stay tuned for my next review, and until then guys, skadoosh everyone and have a great day and take care. And, oh, I've kind of missed making videos on YouTube to be honest. I feel like it's been forever since I did a video. I mean, two weeks ago was my Hachiko review, and I don't know, I'm just starting to miss making videos and I'm kind of starting to lose interest. But, you know, when I do make a video, my interest starts to increase. So hopefully I don't lose interest anytime soon. Stay tuned for my next review, which will be for Beethoven. But, like I said, goodbye everyone, skadoosh, and have a great day, and take care everyone.